In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use my new free tool to generate your collections simply by clicking on a button. Then we're going to be looking at how you can participate in the hackathon coming up this year, as well as become a part of the artist list, standing a chance to win a spot to do a collaboration with me. Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome to my channel. Today is a very special episode. It is an episode where I'm going to be releasing a free tool for you to try out. Keep in mind it's an alpha stage and I literally had a few hours to code it. But it is useful, helpful and you don't even have to touch code to create NFT artworks now. Looking at the repos, we can see the new repo over here and this tool is a visual aid and is based on the Hashlips Art Engine, the very popular repo that is helping thousands of people out creating generative art. Now, this one is for people who understand the code, knows how to use the terminal, and likes more functionality. Then go for this one. If you simply want to create a quick collection with a visual interface, you can go to the Hashlips Art Engine underscore app, or go to this URL directly. This is an open source repo, so feel free to contribute if you want to, but for people who just want to use it, go to the releases section here on the right hand side and click on version 0.1.0 alpha. If you want to do the same thing that I'm doing right here. Then go ahead and download the executable binary for your operating system. There is one for the ARM architecture, these are for Macs with the M1 chip, then there's also for Macs running uh, without the M1 chip over there, as well as Windows. So I'm going to download this one because my Mac has an M1 chip. Once you have downloaded the DMG file or the EXE, then you can go ahead and install it. Here is the downloaded file. So I've got my DMG, you might have your EXE for Windows. Keep in mind that I haven't signed these files. So your computer might say that it can't install this from an untrusted source. Now, if you want to bypass that, you can do whatever you feel like is right. I can't advise you on that. All I know is this tool will help you in generating. That being said, so I'm going to double click on this. Here's the installation file and I'm going to drag it into my applications. In my applications folder, I can see here is the tool. I'm going to double click on this and open it up. And now we can see the Hashlips art engine in a visual form. How cool is that? I do want to, however, mention that you'll most probably need a file like layers, like we used to, and what is in this uh, folder structure over here. Well, let's go ahead and open this folder up. You can see inside of this folder, there are subsequent folders named background, bottom lid, eye color, eyeball, goo, and so on. These are different attributes that you will need for your NFT collection. These are individual attributes. So for instance, the eyeball, we have inside of that folder two images, one with a red eye and one with a white eye. Then we have got eye colors in the eye color folder, and this is how they look. They're just simple colors. We are going to use each one of these different looking images to construct an eye. In the bottom lid, we have different size lids. And you can play around and look at my previous videos on how to construct this kind of folder structure. It is very important that you don't have anything else in here apart from your folders and in them, your image files. That is it. For people who have followed my videos before, they know that we can add some rarity levels to the certain attributes that we uh, want to render. For instance, if we want this pink color to be more rare than the others, we would give it a rarity weight. And according to the ones next to it, it will show up more often or less often than the others. How you add a rarity weight is by adapting the file and adding a dollar sign and a weight. I'm going to add a weight of 10. Keep in mind if you don't add the dollar sign and a number, by default it's 1. So this will make it show up uh, more 
than the other ones. So in order to make the pink very rare, I'm going to give Saihan a 50, the green, maybe a 50 as well. Purple, going to give a 100. Red, I'm going to give 60 maybe. And yellow, we're going to give another 50. We can see that pink is more scarce because it has a lower rarity weight. We'll see this in the program just now. Let's close this off and let's focus on the tool. Looking at the tool's interface itself, it's pretty straightforward. You get like a little control section for the configurations. Here in this area, the configurations gets displayed. On the tree side, this will show some of the attributes as we pull them in. In this empty section, we have a display area, which unfortunately doesn't work for Windows currently, but I'll show you this here on Mac. And then on the bottom side, we get a progress bar and some information. And that's it for the interface. Let's start building our collection. Now I have to say this is an alpha app. So if something breaks and goes wrong, please let me know in the repo and uh, just try and uh, do it exactly like I'm doing here. I have coded this in a few hours, so just keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and click on configuration. Currently, we're going to generate maybe 100 NFTs. You can change the name, the supply, the symbol, and your description over here. You can also play around with the height and the width of the image that will be generated. Once you are done with your configuration, you can close that off. You then have to open the path section. This is where you need to specify two paths. The first path is your input path. So we need to select the layers folder. Let's go ahead and set the input path now. So on the desktop, there's the layers. And here you can see, I want to set the folder to point to this one, which has all our different layers. Click on open. Then we need to set an output path where this will save. This I want to place on my desktop somewhere. So just select a path and click on open as well. Now that our path have been set, if you did this correctly, if you click on layer order and you pull in your folders, you should see the folders being pulled in like this. If at any point you got an error, please make sure that your folders don't contain any other files, but apart from image PNG files, and that it looks like the folder structure that I've shown. Two things happen when you do this. You will see your images being displayed here in the display area and on the right hand side we see our tree. Now you can see there's a tiny number on each one of these attributes and that's the rarity weights. The eye color that we've changed you can see have the respective weights as well. Now once we have this we can see that this doesn't make sense at all. So what you can do and unfortunately like I said the display does not work for Windows but you can still restructure the order. We can go ahead and put the eyeball, take the eyeball and drag it and you kind of replacing these layers. So next would be the eye color, it's in the correct place. Then we'll have the iris, the shine, then we'll have the goo being lost and that is our fully constructed layer order. At this point, when you have constructed your layer order, do not click on Get Folders again. This will reset and pull in the folders from scratch. Rather go and close this off, go to Create, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we can click on Create, it will render our files. There's a built folder that's being generated for us on the desktop. Everything worked well, and if we click on the build, we can see here are our images and respectively it also has its own JSON files. We can see that we still need to replace the CID. Now after you have uploaded your files to IPFS you can simply go in here and replace your code in there the, uh, the IPFS link like we used to do Please watch one of my previous videos if you don't know what I'm doing here. And then you can simply click on update metadata. There is no feedback here, I still need to work on that. But if you go back to the JSON files, you can see that it's been replaced.
And that is how easy it is to use this new tool. Let me know in the comments if you are excited to try this out. Also, just to mention what I said in the beginning, yes, there's going to be a hackathon in the middle of this year taking place in the year 2022, which is the year we are in right now. Now, if you want to participate, there'll be more information available later, but go ahead and fill out this form if you want to participate or a team wants to participate. It is a really cool hackathon and you'll be able to contribute to open source code and win some prizes. So go ahead and fill that in. I'll leave the link in the description below. And last but not least, what is the artist list? I am very excited about this form and the feedback that I'm going to get from the community. If you are an artist or you know about an artist that wants to go into the NFT space and need some supporting structure, feel free to give them this document for them to fill in. I will have a look at it and on a later stage this year, I will start this art movement to help artists in the NFT space with a collaboration that they can do with me. I'm going to choose a lot of artists, so feel free to fill in the form. Don't be hesitant. Anyone can show me what they've got and we can collaborate in the future. But this is a way for me to always want to give back to the community. I hope you had an amazing time with me today in this video. If you did, let me know. Subscribe and as always, have an amazing day. Cheers for now.